Time to start. Um, this is my first time speaking at uh, LPC, uh, and uh, my name is Arno Capella. I'm a uh, um, software engineer consultant at Mind, um, and I'm also a build route maintainer, uh, which is why I'm here in the Build Systems Microconference. Um, and I want to talk about the uh, well, how we as build systems uh, need to deal with uh, traceability and compliance. So, first, I'll give a bit of uh, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> first, I'll give a bit of uh, background about what I mean when I uh, talk about uh, compliance and traceability. Um, and then, mainly, it's about discussion. Okay, what should we as build systems do better? Um, my question is also a, a bit, <laughs> to what extent should we bother? But uh, <laughs> we can come to that. Um, so yeah, the uh, idea is to have it uh, at least as open as the previous talk and uh, with questions in the middle or, or remarks or uh, um, taking it in a completely different direction, all of that is fine. Um, so I was inspired by this, by a uh, talk at uh, Linear Connect earlier this year um, from uh, people from Array, which is a, Array is a kind of company that is between legal and software development. Um, and uh, they were talking about how they uh, helped the Onero project get their compliance uh, story, um, well, how, how to do their compliance story. Um, and so what, what triggered me is this, this fact that um, by distributing software, you have obligations, you have things you have to do. We know all that, but um, it's, it's nice to think about, a bit about, okay, what, what does it actually mean? Um, <clears throat> so this, this, these obligations are a bit um, more than, than you might initially think. Uh, in the end, it all da boils down to uh, handle legal risks. And uh, that is very different depending on how you actually use the software. So if you just use the software, mostly uh, if it's open source, you can just do it. Um, if you uh, put the software in a product and then sell that product, um, then there's a bit more that you have to do because you have to follow all the licenses. <coughs> becomes especially more complicated if you have downstream, um, not users, but downstream consumers who combine it with other stuff. Um, because then <coughs> those downstream consumers they have to do their compliance in the end. Uh, they have to follow, um, follow licenses, and in the future, they have to follow uh, CRA requirements. Um, so they, they have an obligation to have, uh, on the one hand, license compliance, and on the, one hand, and on the other hand, traceability, uh, which is mainly for the security requirements. Um, and if you're in the middle somewhere, then this puts higher requirements on you in the middle to uh, give information to your downstream that is uh, actually usable. Uh, and so this comes back to the whole ISBOM story and so on. Um, so uh, usually in, as in build systems, we think of the build system produces an image, and that image goes into a product, and there it ends. Um, but there are quite a few use cases where build systems are used to produce something which is not the, the end product, so I give some examples here. Um, uh, for example, if you produce a platform image or the um, uh, binaries that finally are going to make a platform image, uh, which is then uh, used by a downstream or by another company uh, to add more components to it and then get to the final image that is installed on a device. Uh, we also have users that make container images um, and that are then going to be combined with the platform image and be installed on a target device. Um, we also have people who build SDKs and that are then used to uh, build an appliance. And so you can use the build system to build the SDK. That's a fairly common use case even. And maybe there are people who have more use cases where uh, you have downstream users. Maybe I should ask already for uh, how many people in the room in remotely, um, so remotely you can you have a, a hands-up button that you can. I oh know you can't use it. 
Okay, I don't know how to handle the remote people here. Uh, for how many people do, do how many people do have such use cases where they have downstreams? Uh, not so many. I had expected a little more. If you click yeah. on the plus, you should see a, a poll, an option to start an instant poll. Or is there a little A, B, C, D on your, on your slide? There is no. Ah, start a poll. I was looking. Oh. But there, if there's an A, B, C, D on there, it'll do one automatically for you. But you don't have to fiddle if you don't want to. Okay, let's just try this. Just for the fun of it. So now people who are logged into BBB should see a poll. I oh, don't see. I, I. I will vote here. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not going to let this wait for too long. And then I can publish poll. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there are a few people who have, who have these use cases. Um, so now, if in such a use case, what does it mean concretely? Uh, so what you need is obviously a manifest that describes the components that go, go uh, into your system. Up to there, this is the, the normal thing that we all know about. Um, it's also important to have this uh, as, a, as a decomposition. Um, as a build system, we tend to put everything flat. So we have a bunch of packages, and they're all, um, uh, I mean, the, the packages go into the image, and that's the, the level uh, we have it in. In general, this can be more complicated. So we have components that go into other components. Um, for example, if you have a container image uh, and you put that on, in another image, yeah, then you have this hierarchy already. But as build systems, we're usually not faced with that. Um, then, oh, there is, oh, there's the notes from Philip. <laughs> uh, the uh, provenance of each component is important. That basically for us the upstream URL, um, and of course the patches that we apply to it, and then the license of each component. And that's where I think the situation is not so great. Um, so basically, we have accurate license information about source files, but the difficulty that we still have is how this maps to the, the binaries. Um, so we, the, the, we, we put a concluded license for each package, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, based on an, uh, an estimate, I would say, about what, what files go into that package, really. Um, so and something that, that uh, we came up with this weekend in the uh, build -through developer meeting is uh, in the source there is a, a file, a documentation file that is uh, GFDL licensed. Um, how can you be sure that this does not actually end up on your target? Um, uh, and then the, an important thing, and that's where I think we're also fairly lacking, is a traceability. So there's the traceability aspect of where this conclusion comes from. So we put a concluded, or yeah, we put a concluded license in the uh, in a manifest. Uh, but how did we get to that conclusion? It's in a way automatic because the uh, the build system produced it, but actually it's based on manual information in the recipes. So it's uh, there. There is, I think, there's a lack of traceability there. Um, so now going back to, uh, to the array people that I saw in, in Linaro Connect. Uh, so basically, they ended up with making an entire system where, no, no we can't do that. Uh, can you see my mouse? Yeah. The, the left-hand side here, that is Yocto. And then they had to put this entire flow uh, on top of it uh, to have a good compliance story. Um, so basically what they did, it's not super important, but what they did is uh, have a, a, a way to combine information, the information from Yocto with information from Debian uh, to have a good estimate of what licenses are, and then have uh, tooling to help with uh, the manual processing and validation of all these licenses. Um, so I'm going to go to the discussion in a second, but then we first have to 
establish a bit of terminology just to be sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Uh, so what the build system does is it uh, takes uh, source packages, it downloads them, uh, then it patches them, uh, and that is controlled by the recipe. And then the recipe also builds uh, them and pro uh, creates a, um, I didn't find a good word for it, so I called it a, a, a source package and a build package. Uh, and then between the build package, you have dependencies which are also managed by the recipe. And then in the end, you have the artifacts. So the, the build packages step, stack onto each other and they produce an artifact that is uh, distributed. All right. Uh, so I have some ideas of what we should or maybe should not do to improve the situation. And uh, so I'm getting, I'm looking for feedback on that or trying to give you ideas. Um, <clears throat> I don't actually, I haven't checked in to what extent uh, Yocto does per file info of the sources. Uh, so in the SBOM that is generated, um, ideally there should be for every source file the corresponding license or at, at least as far as you have that license information. Um, and ideally also in the, uh, uh, in the build package, there should be per file a license, a concluded license, uh, which theoretically can be different for each file. In practice, we probably just put the same license on all files. Um, does anybody know how the situation is currently in Yocto? Yeah, you declare your licenses in your BitBake recipe, and that's where the audit goes from. So if your source doesn't match that for some reason, that connectivity is going to be can be lost. Yeah, and I think. Uh, Go on. Yeah, but I think the the license is declared in a recipe and applies to all the packages produced by that recipe, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, even though it's possible, like if you have a documentation package, that that documentation package has a different license than the the um, the main binary package. You should have multiple. Uh, yeah, you can declare a license for the whole recipe, but you can also declare individual licenses per package, so then uh, they will have different. And are there many packages, uh, recipes that do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but even though, like, uh, in, I was a part of that presentation as well, and even if you see, like, what they did is that they concluded that Debian is doing the right thing or the correct way. Because the manual process reviewing the thing is still, you know, like it's it, it's usually better than the rest, but it's still manual, right? I mean, like that is the 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 problem that there's you can specify per package, and then of course, like depending on the build flags, you might bring different dependencies, and then of course, like they might imply a different license for the binary package and all of that. So the the thing that is uh, that I think that is lacking in a way is is an automated way to do that right for to, in order to verify and not only like for whatever that is described on the recipe but then we have the problems of you know like Golang or Rust or whatever that is including it you know like inside the project itself you know like a substantial amount of dependencies you know like and they're and they're not necessarily building all the files of those modules right they mm -hmm. might be building just like one single component and then you have to review you know, like the, the, the license basically and imply the, the, and have the concluded license in the end. So this, oh, I don't... There, she was first. Yes, sorry. Was first. <laughs> no, but uh, this, I don't think, is a problem that Yocto can solve. You first need to improve those language-specific tools to give us something that we can use, right? Uh, you can say... Uh, in an hour. Hmm? Please just stop at this point. <laughs> Come back in an hour. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So for me, two things. So I work a lot on Debian packages. Um, Debian defines licenses not for binaries, but for sources. Because licenses, they say you, sh you have to distribute the source code, but the binary is not licensed or their GPR or something. So for me, having license of binaries is kind of weird. I don't know if that makes sense. So in Debian, we only give copyright not for the binaries, but copyright for all of the source code. And we use all of the licenses for all of the source code. So we can have Apache, GPL, whatever, inside of the same program. And it's not a problem, because you don't have to decide which uh, concluded license 
you said is for binary package because licenses do not apply to binaries but apply to source code, in my opinion. Okay, yeah. my bad, my bad. Uh, he was, he was, uh, sorry? Yeah, the, we, we are getting a lot of these requests from customers who are asking us to give, uh, like we, re I'm from TI, like we release all the SDKs, but when we release the SDKs, we also give software manifest file that we generate from Yocto and include in our SDK that clearly gives what are the binaries that we are packaging and what, are, what is the license for each of those binaries. But recently we have started hearing from customers where they want to see the license for each source file. Like what was the source file used, what was the license text on it, and they need to know that because that's where the legal issues are coming in, not from binary point of view, but also from the source code point of view. Because there might be one source file that might have got in, included in the package which we might not have caught and that might have some license which may not go well with those guys. And if there is a mechanism to generate the license or manifest file based on source code, I would be very interested to see some comments. After First, one hour. I'm not sure that the concept of a file is relevant. Uh, uh, copyright is defined for 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 works. I, I, can I can I read to that immediately? So the concept for, for, of a file is relevant in the composition uh, concept. So basically, if you have uh, if you produce a binary and then that binary is not copied to your targets, then this is a strong hint that the license that was used to produce that binary. The, the, the license of the sources that was used to produce that binary is also not relevant. It's a useful abstraction for us, but I'm not sure that's legally okay. correct. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> but he was first, but <laughs> we'll let you go. Bugs happen in source files. If your source file isn't in your binary, you don't have the bug. You need to know which source files are there and you need to know when you combine the files what the overall license is, and you have to do the logic ands and ors of all of those files. It's all, all, almost all the legal I've been, people I've worked with basically are in the position that the truth is going to be at the file level, not at the component level. Do we want to give him or pass to him? Here, I want to. So uh, one thing is, uh, you can say, for the package. But what I'm missing is reality also uh, that the source code, you can say the archive, deliver information about which I can use for the package config. For example, take something for some SQT or something like that, where there's a huge amount of components with some is BSD, some is uh, two clause, three clause BSD, MIT licensed, DPL3, whatever they have done. And then you have the commercial part of QT, so you have all this license combination depending on my package config. And no matter what yeah, you do. That actually comes down to the same issue. Okay, so yeah. there is sources, they have licenses, but you don't actually use all those sources. Exactly. So probably those licenses don't apply either. Which brings me to this wild idea. Maybe we should just all the sources that are not uh, being used in the end, just remove them, then we're sure that they're not used. Yeah. So Kate likes that, okay. <laughs> so my point was, uh, no matter what, the license we write in the recipes, normally it's always a bit, oh, now we, the project below, there's some change, now added a new module or something, oh, we need to add that as a license also, so it'd be always behind a certain point. So if somehow that uh, the project itself could deliver, oh, this is all my licenses, and push it down to the project instead, as so we as a build system could read. That's indeed <laughs> another idea I have that is the second one <laughs> that maybe we should be using, instead of having our own copy of uh, our concluded license, maybe we should be using upstream information if that is available. Like um, not many projects, but some projects have a nice single file that describes it. If you have uh, the SPDX tags in every source file, you can use SP, uh, uh, reuse SPDX to generate a, an SBOM out of it. Um, 
you don't actually get a concluded license out of that, so I'm not sure how to handle it then for the, the binary packages, but it could be something that we could consider using. Yeah, I, I, I defy anyone to show me a copyright statute anywhere in the world that talks about files. It talks about works and derivative works. Um, when you're dealing with a copyleft license where it's talking about the derivative work, uh, the binary is a derivative work of the entire source code. So for, imagine when you type make config, right, and you turn various things off, you might think, okay, well, that was an unused source file, but that's not true because it was used as part of the derivation you made when you made the binary, and you have to produce it under copyleft licenses, period. So you shouldn't remove it. I, I'm okay with Kate's idea that we note that maybe that code didn't appear in the final binary, and you could certainly share that information with the user, but it doesn't not make it a derivative work of that file just because you removed it during the build process. Yeah, that's an interesting observation because there are many projects that, like for example, are supposedly under LGPL, but they have some test code which is GPL. Does it mean that uh, if you use that project, you actually have GPL in your final? It may, yeah. Well, no, so, but what, what he's saying is that even if you don't ship the binary. No, 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 but like Tesco, you don't ship Tesco without a final product. Yeah, but the, what he's saying is that it's a derived work because fi you're deriving final, from the same fi thing. Final comment or insult right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Final insult. If we want to derive the, the license for the binary, um, isn't the only way to have assistance from the compiler? Because that's the only thing that knows what, what yes. builds the compiler on linker, right? So if we, it parses all the source files, all the header files, if we talk C, C++, and it, the linker links everything, so that, that's the, the entity that really knows what gets into every binary. Yeah, okay. let's stop there. <laughs> Good conclusion. Feel, feel free to beat each other out in the hallway. <laughs> okay, thank you.